Well, greetings everyone, and uh, welcome back to Metarox channel and uh, my new schedule of every other Thursday having uh, one of my special, more personal uh, collecting or comic book journey or something. Maybe there may be more than comics coming up uh, here in the future. I have plenty of ideas, uh, and of course I'm very excited to still continue with the Roundup every other Thursday, so check that out next week uh, uh, on Grader's Notes Thursday. But for today, I'm going to be talking about Atlas Seaboard, uh, specifically the comic line. Um, Atlas Seaboard had a magazine line, uh, Devilina, um, uh, Thrilling Adventure Stories. I had all of those, uh, including the Gothic Romances. Back in the past, uh, when I worked at the comic shop, somebody brought in a whole collection of that stuff, and uh, I had it for many years, and unfortunately I sold it <laughs> back in the 90s, uh, thinking that I would not uh, complete the Atlas Seaboard set, uh, which I probably was halfway done or so at that point. Uh, and I regret that, but that's okay, because I got the comic line finished thanks to a lot of members uh, of in the community, which make this all the more special. Uh, Comic Mag Musing sent me my last two Vickies. I got a, a whole bunch of, of ones that I was missing from Collecting Chaos. I've gotten stuff from Rayman, the Silencer Man. I've gotten stuff from uh, Unruly Simeon, from King of Comicdom, and probably a few others that I'm leaving out here. So that makes this recapturing of this set or i didn't have the complete set but i had a lot of them all the more special um this might go into two parts because i want to talk about the history and my journey and these titles and you know i get a bit of i, I tend to get a bit verbose when it comes and i get overly excited like i am about completing this set and i have read through most of these, I still have a few that I have to go through again that I don't have great memories on, but let's get into the comics. And you might be wondering why I have these two Marvel comics here. Well, all will be explained in the near future here. So let's start with the, I, I, basically these are in, in uh, alphabetical order, Barbarians. Um, Iron Jaw is actually unique in that it's the only character, I believe, who appeared in five issues. Um, Atlas Comics only lasted less than a year, 1974 through 1975. Um, this actually has a couple, uh, has another backup, which is kind of not memorable as I recall. But Iron Jaw is a pretty interesting character. It's kind of, he's from kind of a dystopian future, um, uh, where, you know, obviously things have gone very wrong. And here is Blazing Battle Tales start, uh, featuring Sergeant Hawk, kind of a, a rough and edgy war uh, tale here. This is the only one with Sergeant Hawk. And you'll see that <clears throat> throughout the Atlas comics, uh, Atlas Seaboard comics line, they were just a little bit edgier than Marvel comics were uh, at the time. Just, they, they showed a little more skin, a little more violence, a little more um, adult themed or mature themed, I guess, but not enough to take them outside of the comics code, but just pushing it a little bit uh, there. Here we have the Brute, which, uh, as as you'll see in a lot of Atlas Seaboard comics, they kind of are, are inspired, or shall we say, or have a lot of similarities to the Marvel Comics characters. And this, you could sort of make a parallel to the Hulk, although this was a essentially a Neanderthal who was frozen in ice and released and Obviously, he didn't, you know, he was confused, et cetera, et cetera. The, um, you know, again, there's only lasted three issues. I think that the only there's only a few titles that lasted four issues. And uh, I think Iron Jaw is one of them. But uh, again, these are just, you know, they, they sort of have the Marvel Comics vibe. If you notice the, you know, the masthead here, very similar, you know, the way that they place it here. It's, it's, it has a lot of similarities, and that may be on purpose. In fact, I, 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 I ascribe to the theory that it is on purpose um, because the actual owner of Atlas Seaboard Comics was Martin Goodman, who was uh, one of the founders of Marvel, and he was kind of 
either. I'm not sure exactly what happened. He was either pushed out or he didn't like the way things were going. He didn't have uh, much say so. So he left Marvel in the early 70s, I want to say, and created this comic company. Here's the cougar, kind of a stuntman turned adventurer. Uh, that only lasted a couple issues. Not the best uh, little series there, but not the worst either. I mean, th th these all have some redeeming value. Uh, and here is uh, Demon Hunter, number one, the only issue uh, that came out of this title. And if you see any similarities to Devil Slayer, yes, that is the same character. And that was something that Atlas Seaboard was kind of pioneering uh, at the time, in that they, uh, they let the creators keep the rights to their characters and the art and everything. So Rich Buckler, you know, once Atlas uh, folded in 1975 eventually took his character and renamed him Devil Slayer and brought him into Marvel. And uh, Rich Buckler is just one of the many talents that were included uh, here in this uh, comic line. Neil Adams worked for them. Um, their editor was uh, Larry Lieber, uh, uh, Stanley's brother. One of the other uh, co-editors was Jeff Roven, who worked at Warren and was a, as comic historian. Wally Woods, Steve Ditko, uh, Pablo Marcos, uh, just so much talent that was over here in um, Atlas Seaboard at the time because they they couldn't, I, I believe they were all like freelancers, so they were getting paid more than, you know, if they were on staff, etc. Um, obviously, they, they couldn't afford, I guess, to have a big staff because they didn't know if, how this would turn out and it did not turn out well. The Destructor is an interesting uh, series and one that I've had since I bought these off the rack. I kept this. Um, has some similarities perhaps to the origin of Spider-Man. Uh, his family was killed or his mentor, I forgot exactly what. Uh, very, very similar kind of teen angst uh, angle there. Uh, but again, I just I just enjoy these comics. I mean, yeah, they 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 some may say they're kind of rip offish, you know, in 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 many regards to Marvel comics, but uh, I find them so charming and just a great little footnote in history here. Grim Ghost, uh, this is a really good series that I enjoy. Uh, kind of like the Devil's Reaper uh, in a sense. He's kind of a highwayman, debonair. Uh, you know, just kind of a good vibe to the to this little to this little three issue series, um, and I, I, again, a lot of these were given to were not I I bought them off collecting chaos for I think a reasonable price, and uh, his comics were just high grade. The ones I mine are you know not not quite as good. Uh, here's another good little. It's a one shot of fright with Son of Dracula. R really good story here actually. I'm not going to tell you a lot of the details because in case you were you're in two of them, I'll just give you some kind of, you know, amorphous kind of synopsis, perhaps, of what they are. Here's Hands of the Dragon. Obviously, back in the 70s, uh, Kung Fu was big. And, uh, you know, you could say this is some kind of analogy to Chang Chi. Although, again, they all have the differences. They are quite stark differences. So that's not direct ripoffs, but certainly they're they have a lot of similarity, shall we say. Here's the aforementioned Iron Jaw, who um actually this is part of a dystopian future. Um and his that this is this was pretty violent <laughs> comic here. You, you his his jaw was was actually cut out by a sword. And uh, they thought he was going to die. And then it's, it's kind of a sword and sorcery stuff here. And here's his uh, origin here. And uh, he obviously survived and got an iron jaw and was able to talk in the whole bit. Um, here is Morlock 2001. Uh, it's interesting here. I think this is perhaps um, an uh, analogous, to, analogous to Warlock, uh, Adam Warlock. He was like... The, born out of a pod. He's actually like a plant, actually. Um, and uh, he's very naive and turned against his uh, creators. You know, very, had a lot of similarities to Warlock, but maybe I'm off base there. But uh, certainly to me, it, 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 I think the similarities are a little bit too stark for it to be coincidental. Again, only three issues here. Kind of a Kirby-esque cover there. Um, 
And here is uh, another pretty good uh, little little series here, Phoenix. Um, again, it's more one of those like more like uh, futuristic uh, kind of series. Well, I, no, I don't know if this one was futuristic, but uh, uh, certainly this next one is. Uh, but I, I seem to recall that I enjoy it. Now, notice that some of these at the end, they kind of change the character a little bit, make him more superheroish. Like this was perhaps more science fictiony, and I think that was on purpose. I think Atlas um, Goodman and his son, I think Chip Goodman, was also hired there, wanted to really, you know, just go mano a mano with Marvel. And he's most of the people that were, most of the characters were kind of converted to straight superhero at the last, at the, for the last issues there. And then they folded. So obviously that did not go well. Okay. I'm going to stop probably after this one because it's already getting to the 11 minute mark. This is a really good series. I really enjoyed this. Um, Kind of Planet of the Apish in a sense, but, well, not really. I mean, they the, these are astronauts that went to Mars, I believe, and then come back to Earth at some future point, and it's all hell's broken loose. It's uh, vampires and savages, and uh, yeah, it, it's 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 good stuff, though. It's really enjoyable stuff. Neil Adams uh, did some of the art in here. And um, it's, like I said, it's too bad that some of these only, you know, folded after less than, you know, some three issues or f perhaps four, you know. Um, but uh, because, you know, some of these were actually quite well done uh, as far as um, storytelling and the art. Some of them not so well, like I'm going to tell you in a minute. Actually, let's do one more here. Lomax, NYPD. Again, return of kind of the crime um comics here which uh, there weren't a lot of these even marvel didn't do uh, really a lot of these so this is kind of more of a uh, uh, original well not original concept but, you know but at least they tried to be a little different here uh, notice this has a, like a pen stamp so this these actually did make it to um the uk and in fact gray man has a, a, a near complete set i think he's only missing the vickies as well so i'll end it up here we're about 12 and a half minutes and i have about half to go and i want to talk a little bit more of next time about my journey with these comics and so forth and uh we'll talk a little bit more about the background etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, but i really enjoy making videos for all of you guys out there i hope you've enjoyed this uh, let me know what you think about these comics are you interested is this something that you know it's like oh roger you know <laughs> only you and a few guys would even bother collecting this stuff um but you know i love the obscure stuff i love the stuff that you know sometimes we 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 don't really focus on because they're not they they just were a blip on the radar um screen of comic history but to me these the the rationale and the characters, etc., still have importance. And still, to me, uh, have a has a certain charm and a little an allure that I just can't resist. All right, I'm out of here. Thirteen and a half minutes. I've been babbling way too much. Everybody, join me next Thursday for the roundup, and then a third uh, two weeks from today, I'll finish this up. Everybody, be blessed and be back. Bye.